This video is an introduction to trigonometry. We're going to go right back to basics to make sure you really understand exactly what trigonometry is. There will be some exercises to work through as we go through the lesson. If you want to work through the exercises with me, you'll need paper and a pen, a ruler, a protractor and a scientific calculator. If you need to go and get any of those, pause the video now. OK, welcome back. So we're going to go right back to basics, but before we do that, I'm just going to go through a little bit about what trigonometry is and where it comes from. So it comes from two Greek words, uh, meaning triangle and measure. So trigonometry is all to do with measuring triangles in some way. It's been around since the 3rd century BC, so it's one of the oldest bits of maths that we've got. And the basic trigonometry work is used to calculate missing sides and angles in right angled triangles. You can do a lot more complicated things with trigonometry later on as well, but we're just going to focus on the real basics today, and that is looking just at right angle triangles. It's got quite a lot of uses, so trigonometry pops up in astronomy, so that would be looking at what happens in space, uh, navigation including your sat-navs, computer gaming, uh, architecture and engineering, and lots of different other areas of mathematics, so it's fundamentally important to maths and to all sorts of other science-based topics. Before we start, we're going to get a bit of terminology sorted. So there's particular ways of labelling the sides of a right angle triangle. Before, So first of all, we're just going to get some terminology sorted because there's a particular way of labelling the sides of a right angle triangle when we're doing trigonometry. So there's our right angle triangle. You can see on one of the angles there's what looks like a zero with a line through it. That's the Greek letter theta and that's used in trigonometry to label a missing angle. So this might be the angle that maybe we're trying to calculate. Okay, We've got the hypotenuse. That's the longest side of a right angle triangle and it will always be opposite the right angle. If you've done some work before on Pythagoras' theorem you'll have used the word hypotenuse before. We've also got the opposite side, that's the one opposite angle theta. So it's opposite the angle that we might be interested in in the problem. And the final side is called the adjacent side. Adjacent means next to. So the adjacent side is the one that's kind of next to angle theta, so next to the angle that we're interested in. What you might sometimes see is these words not written out in full but you might see them shortened so for example you can see opposite has been shortened to op or just o hypotenuse has been shortened to hype or just h and adjacent has been shortened to adj or a okay here's our first exercise then what I want you to do is draw those right angle triangles as accurate as you can on your piece of paper and then I want you to measure the missing side length, which is the hypotenuse in each case, and the missing angle. You might want to pause the video while you do this. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you've had a go at doing those yourself, but if you haven't, I've got the answers for you anyway. What you should have found when you did them is that the yellowy orange triangle has got a hypotenuse of 5 centimetres, and the angle is about 37 degrees. The green one, the hypotenuse, is 10 centimetres, and again the angle is about 37 degrees. And the blue one, the hypotenuse, is 15 centimetres, and again the angle is about 37 degrees. So you should have noticed that the angle in each case has come out as the same. Okay, it's come out as 37 degrees. That's because the green and blue triangles are an enlargement of the original yellow triangle. So all I've done to get from the yellow triangle to the green triangle is double the side length and then to get to the blue triangle I've tripled the side length. So the triangles are similar, they are the same sort of basic shape but they've just been enlarged or shrunk. And the fact that the angle is the same in each one is going to be really important for what we're going to do next. Okay, We're going to do some calculations with the values that we've just found. So I've got my table there with opposite, adjacent and hypotenuse and the angle. And I'm going to calculate 
you can see in the table there, we've got opposite divided by hypotenuse, adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and opposite divided by adjacent. Now you might be thinking, well, why on earth are we doing that? But we'll have a go. So if we do opposite divided by hypotenuse for the first one, I'd be doing 3 divided by 5, which you can do on a calculator, and you should find that comes out as 0 0.6. Let's have a look at the next calculation. So I'm doing 4 divided by 5, adjacent divided by hypotenuse, that comes out as 0 0.8. And then for opposite divided by adjacent, I'm doing 3 divided by 4, and that comes out as 0 0.75. OK, let's try the second one. Well, opposite divided by hypotenuse is 6 divided by 10, 0 0.6. Adjacent divided by hypotenuse, 8 divided by 10, 0 0.8. Opposite divided by adjacent, so that's 6 divided by 8, 0 0.75. So you might be starting to think there's something going on here. We've got two triangles that are the same sort of shape but different sizes. But when we do those calculations, so opposite divided by hypotenuse or adjacent divided by hypotenuse, they're coming out with the same numbers. So as you can probably predict, you might want to check these yourself on a calculator, but when you do the same for the third triangle, you get exactly the same values. So although those triangles are all different sizes, when we work out opposite divided by hypotenuse or adjacent divided by hypotenuse for each one, we get the same number. So there seems to be a link here between the angle size and those three calculations that I've just done. OK, what I'd like you to do now is get your scientific calculator and just work out sine 37, cos 37 and tan 37. You should see sine, cos and tan towards the top half of your calculator. You might sometimes need to put brackets like I've done here. It depends on your particular calculator. If you want to work those out for yourself, pause the video now. OK, welcome back. Hopefully you've managed to work those out and write them down. Now you should find that when you work out sine 37, it'll come out as a huge big long decimal. It'll come out as 0 0.6, 0 0.18 and a load of other numbers which I've not bothered to write down. But that's kind of quite close to 0 0.6. And then if we start to have a look in our table, we can see 0 0.6 is popping up there in that op divided by hype column. Okay, what happened when you worked out cos 37? Well, you should have got 0 0.7986 and a load of other numbers. Well, that's really, really close if we round it to 0 0.8, which is what's appearing in that column. And then if you worked out tan 37, it came out as 0 0.7535 and a load of other numbers, but that's fairly close to 0 0.75. So that's what's happened in that column there. So sine, cos, and tan just tell us about what happens when I divide one side of a right angle triangle by another. And it's a very, very powerful thing because what that means is what I can do is I can use these calculations to work out a missing angle or I can use these calculations to work out a missing side length. So to sum up, we've done some calculations here with three triangles. Those three triangles were similar so they were the same sort of shape, but they were different sizes. The angle in each one was the same, about 37 degrees. When we divided side lengths by the side lengths, we'd found that we got identical answers. So there's something about the division of two side lengths and the angle that's linked. We've also then looked at pressing the sine, cos and tan buttons, buttons on your calculator, and we've discovered that there's a link there between what happens when we divide opposite by hypotenuse and what happens when we press sine 37. There's a link between adjacent and hypotenuse and what happens when we press cos 37. And there's a link between opposite and adjacent and what happens when we press tan 37. If you want to see now how you can use this idea to work out missing angles or missing sides, have a look at my other videos.